Tim J here. I am presenting this video, this Zuma Void made. It's an awesome video designing a well needed cave spider grinder. Even I needed to see this video because I needed help designing cave spider grinders myself. But my intention of this video is to critique a certain issue in the spawning mechanics that in and I want to influence future cave spider grinder designs. So right now he's talking about the glass that he has. It's a 9x3x9 nine by by nine volume and his proposal is that those glass blocks represent the spaces that cave spiders can spawn in. Then he surrounded it with iron and he eventually starts talking about a certain issue in which part of his design actually has to intersect some of the area where the glass is. So I'm going to eventually start talking about what this volume really is, um, but first let's listen to what he has to say. Building the mob trap at the front of the room will actually cause us some problems. The mob trap needs to be two blocks wide and the first block needs to be where the water ends. Now this two block wide trap will intersect the spawnable area of the cave spider and it will lower the spawn rates. So the ideal location for it to be built is two blocks back. So you'll notice in his video he talks about another optimum design that he actually doesn't end up building where it would not intersect anywhere in that volume that we just described with the glass. Now I'm going to show a design where we only have to intersect it with one and it's only a slight alteration from his design. But I'm also going to have to point out a few inconsistencies with what that volume actually is. And we'll just see what he says about that. So currently we do not have a solution for this problem. However, I'm going to go ahead and build the mob trap on these two blocks here. So here we are with his 9x3x9 glass structure. Now. I'm pointing north right here and west right there and these directions are pretty significant because actually this box um, one key thing about it is it actually prevents all spiders from spawning. I'm not gonna say that these are the actual boxes that need to be air blocks but if you have blocks here then no cave spiders can spawn. This is true. This is a fact but we can remove that row and that column um, and still have the same result with no cave spiders spawning. Now notice that I cannot remove the north and the west columns in rows. I could only remove the side on the south and the east. So you end up with kind of an offset that's not really centered on the spawner itself, but it's actually centered on the lower X and Z coordinates of the spawner. Now here is some proof of what I'm talking about. Here we have my glass structure, we're facing north and west, and I'm going to enclose four different single block areas and prevent any light from touching them. Um, so they're all block light of zero. And now I'm going to, right now it's at twice the speed, and I'm going to increase it to 10 times the speed, and I'm going to run for 5 minutes. And what's going to happen is cave spiders will spawn inside the two blocks that are in the, in the, in the north and the west side of the spawner, but not in the south and the east, even though all four blocks are the exact same distance away from the spawner itself. They're all four blocks away from the spawner. And here we go, five minutes is up. You can already hear some spiders tweaking at 10 times the speed. And here we go, sure enough, there is no spider in the south and the east sides, but there are spiders in the north and in the west. So now that I'm done talking about the direction, let's talk about something that's interesting 
about the volume of this glass right here. Now this glass represents where solid blocks can prevent cave spiders from spawning. However, if all these glass blocks are air, that is not enough to say that we have an optimum spawning area. In fact, we need to add these ice blocks right here to represent how much airspace is necessary for a fully optimum spawning volume. Now this is not the intention of my video to make a spawner that use a uh, grinder that uses this space. However, I am going to point out this as an interesting fact. Now earlier we spawned these spiders in the sides where this um, spawner is, four blocks away. And if we go over to the north side, just by removing that block right there, um, next to that glass block, if I place an ice block there again, that will slightly reduce the chances of, of spawning. And same with the south side here, except it'll be in one block. So it would be the block right there. And if there's a block next to that, that would reduce the chance of a cave spider spawning there. According to the Minecraft wiki, the amount that this would actually improve your grinder rates is only about 1.5%. So this is not very significant. We're not going to go with the 10 by 3 by 10 block design. You can feel free to create one, but I'm still going to stay with the 8 by 3 by 8 block design. But now I'm going to explain why this is actually significant. Here you can see that the wiki talks about horizontally the numbers being able to range while vertically they have to stay at certain integers. Now down lower they actually have the pseudocode which shows um, another significant portion of this um, which is that the center is not on the center of the spawner it's actually centered on the lower part of the spawner and we also are using doubles to calculate the x and z rather than integers which the y uses. Being a programmer myself, I would have to say that that centering on the center of the spawner minus 0.5 might have been a mistake because the programmer, assuming maybe it was Notch, might have been thinking that the coordinates that he was getting for the spawner were actually the higher coordinates rather than the actual center of the spawner, so he was subtracting half, but who knows for sure if he intentionally did that or not. For those of you who don't know, a double, unlike an integer, when converted to its decimal format, has many significant digits past the decimal point. A double is what's used to calculate the x and the z, while an integer is used to calculate the y for the center of the mob being spawned. Now here I in case that entire 8 by 8 3 by 8 area with iron and I also marked where the spawner is with diamond blocks and then I marked the edges the blue points to the south and the east sides and the purple points to the north and the west sides here I'm going to add those colors to the side of the spawning room just so it's easier to see. Ah, so finally we're actually building something. So, here I am. I am on the west side of... I'm sorry, I'm on the east side of the spawner, pointing towards the west side. Um, now you'll notice that I build this glass around just as this Suma Void did in his video. Um, and I only intersect that glass area with these signs. The original, um, the glass area, which I redefined to be 8 by 8 by 3 rather than 9 by 9 by 3. And here we have some spiders spawning just to show you that it obviously it'll work, but the important part is that there's four blocks to the back wall, and you only need three blocks to the front wall. 
And here we have on the other side, so now we're facing the south and we're on the north side of the spawner. So this is the same as, as if we were um, facing east and we were on the west side of the spawner. And this case is actually where the significance of my video comes in the most. Because when you actually implement the design here, you still can have only one intersection row in the spawning area, which are the signs again. So this obviously this works in both directions, but now I don't I have to make sure that there's only only have to make sure there's three blocks away from the back wall, but four blocks away from the front wall. And that's because I'm on the north side. And this is the same as if I was on the west side. So the first example is if you were on the east or the south side of the spawner, facing north or west. And this second example is for if you are on the north or the west side of the spawner, facing either south or east. And here we see spiders spawning. And it works great with only that one row of signs blocking our main spawning area, which that spawning area itself is only down from the optimum spawning area, which would be only down by 1.5%. So I don't know the percentage of this actual grinder as set up right here with the signs in it, blocking a small portion of it, but it is pretty close to optimum and the significant part of my video the main thing that I wanted to share is that you place your walls in the correct positions that you know how far your walls actually need to be uh, so that you can take advantage of the length of the water flowing only eight blocks so if there's a moral to the story watch Zizuma's Cave Spider XP farm for 1.2 tutorial posted on March 24, 2012, rather than his Cave Spider XP farm tutorial which was posted on December 16, 2011, because the newer one is better. He also has an 8 Cave Spider Spawner XP farm video May 19, 2012, which is pretty awesome. So I would recommend the two newer videos, the old one is just history.